Have you ever wanted to build a Wuber Commander but not knowing where to go? Or you want to build a powerful Wuber Commander, again, not knowing where to go? This video is perfect for you. I am going to be going over, in my opinion, the top 10 best commanders in Wuber, starting from 10, working my way down all the way to 1. Now, before you go and click all the way down number 1, just see what the answer is, watch it fully, please. I would really appreciate that. But also, if you clicked on this video not knowing what Wilberg is, in Magic the Gathering there is five colours, white, blue, black, red and green. So they got the first letter of each one except for blue, because blue and black both sound B. So they used the second letter of blue for you, and then called it Wilberg. Before we do this top 10 list, a word from our sponsors. The sponsor of this video is me. I have started an Etsy page where I'm going to try and be selling clothes that I've design thought would be funny thought would be cool thought would be amazing on people's bodies so i literally spent maybe a month or two looking at different resources and stuff to come up with the nicest clothes i could possibly find with the coolest designs that i have done myself with stuff like play mats hoodies t-shirts i'm going to try and do phone cases they're harder than i thought but i do think that it is a really good thing to actually put into so if you would like to help me out or help the channel out please go onto my Etsy it will be linked down below and you'll be able to find very nice clothing and also be supporting the channel so links down below and also if there's any other designs I will be putting on any of my social media so please follow me there as well. Now that that's done let's start with number 10 Go Shintai of Life's Origin. For three in a green you get a legendary Chapman creature shrine that is a mythic. For Wilberg and tap it, return target enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Whenever Go Shentai of Life's Origin or another non-token shrine enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 colour shrine enchantment creature token and is a 3-4. When it comes to commanders, I always try and make it 5 mana or less, unless they are absolutely broken, then I don't mind going paying that little bit extra for that little bit more spice. Having a Wooburg commander for four mana and only needing one green pip is really good to get it onto the battlefield with ease because you don't really need that much colour fixing. This is what I call a enchantment commander. You don't really plan to attack with it. You don't really plan to do much with it. It pretty much just sits there and then speeds up your deck and makes it better. These are really good cards because you hard focus on the commander because you have easy access to it and then you're more likely to win the game if you do it right. Now in saying that, there's many different ways you can build this commander focusing mainly on his first ability. If you actually want to have a deck where this shrine absolutely thrashes, there is many enchantments that power up creatures or give keywords. So you could focus on that, power up your commander and then attack. But again, you're only then using the card at half its abilities. The reason it's number 10 is because I think you have to really hard focus on the shrine part. Shrines are really good in the fact that it gives you an additional shrine and all the shrines work off shrines. I'm saying shrine way too many times. I do think that this is a really good commander if the deck is built right and you do put a lot of money in. That's why it's all the way at number 10. But if you've never seen this commander and you're wondering why I'm saying shrines three million times in one sentence, it's because there is a card type called shrines. And here they are all on screen. Sanctum of All, Go Shintai of Shared Purpose, Go Shintai of Lost Wisdom, Go Shintai of Hidden Cruelty, Go Shintai of Ancient War, Go Shintai of Boundless Vigor, Honden of Cleansing Fire, Honden of Seeking Winds, Hondens of Night's Reach, Hondens of Infinite Rage, Hondens of Lost's Web, Sanctum of Tranquil Light, Sanctum of Calm Waters, Sanctum of Stone's Fang, Sanctum of Shattering Heights, Sanctum of Fruits Harvest. So if you want this deck to work at its absolute best, I recommend having all those cards in. Now with your commander and all the shrines, then your classic stuff like Sol Ring and Arcane Signet, a few ramps and stuff like that, there's not really much room in your deck to be more creative. That's why I find this to be number 10. It is very powerful, but there seems to be like a one way way to build it. And because of that, you don't really have much for creativity. But while he's done, let's go on to number nine, Kenrith the Returned King. For four and a white, you get a legendary creature, human noble, that is a mythic. For a red, all creatures gain trample and haste until end of turn. For one and a green, put a one one counter on target creature. For two and a white, target player gains five life. For three and a blue, target player draws a card. 
Four in a bag put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control and is a 5-5. Five, five. five mana for a 5-5 five, five commander with no keywords is quite good. However, your main focus is the abilities. The second thing about this card that's absolutely amazing is that there's not one way to build it. Best way I personally think you can do is look at this card and pick one or two colours. The second one pretty much needs to be red if you really want to and then focus on them two colours. With the side thing of if you're in a very, very like difficult situation, have a bunch of spare mana, then being able to do the rest of the abilities. For example, if you want to build a 1-1 deck, you focus on the green, giving additional 1-1 counters onto stuff. However, if you were then sitting there and you played maybe like three to five creatures and you're like, I've got a spare red mana, why wouldn't you give them all trample and haste? Or if someone attacks you and you have a little bit of mana left and you're like, oh no, I have like 20 health, Next turn they're going to attack me, but again, I have no cards in my hand, I'm going to tap for this many, get a blue, draw a card, oh, more mana, tap, gain 5 life to give me that little bit more of an edge. Or then you could be like, oh no, I really miss that creature in my graveyard, I really need it, however, I don't really have much to do, bam, creature's back on the field. It's really, really good because it gives you a variation of different things, but if you had focus on one, it still gives you the opportunity to do any of the others. Now on to number eight, Najila the Blades Blossom. For two and a red, you get a legendary creature, Human Warrior, that is a mythic. Whenever a warrior attacks, you may have its controller create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token that's tapped and attacking. For Wooburg, untap all attacking creatures, they gain trample, lifelink, and haste until end of turn. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase Activate this ability only during combat and is a 3-2. Three, 3 mana for a 3-2 is quite good, just like maybe a 6 or 7 good. That's if it had no key abilities. This has two really good abilities that one you can hard focus on or pretty much completely ignore. Essentially you're looking for a warrior deck to be able to play more warriors to then be able to do really cool mad stuff. However, this, even if you ignore the first bit, is still a really good commander. If you hard focus on getting Wooburg mana, you're able to pretty much play any tribal deck or any really deck at all that makes a load of creatures. Then you can just add cards in that give you more mana, sacrifice. The best thing about this card is the second ability triggers as much as you have the mana for. So if you have ways to make infinite mana, you can make infinite combat steps. You have ways to, whenever you attack, you make more tokens. If you make more tokens than you are attacking with, you're able to put cards in that's able to then activate her again and again and again. So this is a commander that you can go infinite with quite easily and be able to win the game and no one have a really a turn. Now again, that's kind of cruel, but when it comes to this, I'm trying to do the top 10 most powerful commanders or the best ones to play. So again, there's gonna be a few cruel things in this list. So when it comes to different ways to trigger her second ability, you can put stuff in that lets you do an additional activation of an ability. You're able to also get ways to get different mana to be able to pay the cost again and again and again. So there's cards just like Lithoform Engine, Stronic Resonator, Illuminous Braces, Phyrexian Altar, Timeless Lotus, Chromantic Ori. If you're trying to find a way to go infinite mana, there's pretty much ways you can just literally just tap the Wooburg thing or get your Chromantic Ori to change it all into Wooburg. You're able to sacrifice tokens if you're making them per attack to be able to then pay the mana cost again. Then you're able to pay the two to do it a second time or pay the Lithoform Engine to then or activate the Lithoform Engine to activate the attack multiple times over and over again. Then plus, if you have a little bit of spare mana, you're able to play these two cards so that pretty much instantly win you the game. Crater Hoof Behemoth, Triumph of the Hordes. Pretty much these cards are very good for you going, cool, I have this card and I want to end the game and I have a large massive army. I get to attack twice, I have enough mana and then I'm able to pay this. So they're either going to die by a large amount of damage or infect. This deck goes from 0 to 100 very fast. Now on to number 7, Morophon the Boundless. For 7 you get a legendary creature, Shapeshifter, that is a mythic. It's a changeling. As Morophon the Boundless enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Spells of the chosen type you cast cost Wooburg less to cast. This effect reduces only the amount of colour mana you pay. Other creatures you control of the chosen type get plus 1 plus 1 and is a 6-6. Six, six. 
Now I know seven mana for a commander is very, very pricey. However, with the amount of abilities and the amount of stuff you can do with this commander, I actually think it's really worth it. So we'll be going through them step by step. One, the best way to play this is in a tribal deck, but it doesn't really matter what tribe you're playing it. Since it is a changeling, if you have cards that enter because you have an angel or a human or a sapling or anything like that, you're able to play your command later on and then activate all them cards. Then when you pick what tribe you want to play, you then get the colorless pips for absolutely free. This is only really good if it has one pip or one pip of each color, mainly because if it has like maybe two or three green, we'll say, it only devotes it down to one or two. Again, still powerful, but you're looking for, I just wanna play the colorless part of the cards or the number always symbols. But then also anything you play gets an additional plus one plus one. Again, a little tiny buff, but it helps absolutely amazingly. You're playing a sapling deck and pick saplings, all of them are instantly two two. Same with rats, same with angels, same with anything really you pick. They become more powerful because there's more of them. And then you're doing, maybe if you're attacking with five, 10, 15 creatures, that's an additional five, 10, 15 damage for absolutely free. When it comes to this, I personally think dragons, slivers, or elementals are the best way to play this commander, mainly because of that Wooburg ability. There are a lot of Wooburg commanders that are literally just Wooburg when it comes to those three tribes, and you get to play them absolutely free. So you can pick dragons like niv Mizzet Reborn, niv Mizzet Supreme, niv Mizzet Guild Pact, Scion of Urtraken. Then there's slivers like the first sliver, Sliver Overlord, Sliver High Lord, Sliver Grave Lord, Sliver Queen, a Sliver Legion. And then elementals like Horde of Notions, Omnath Locus of All, Jengentha the Wellsprings. So pretty much you play a dragon deck, that's four dragons absolutely free. You play a sliver deck, that is a really amount of slivers absolutely free, and some of the more powerful versions. Then plus that, a lot of slivers are only one pip, so again, you're only playing for the coolest part of them. Now we're going on to number six, the Ur Dragon. For four in Wooburg, you get a legendary creature, Dragon Avatar, that is a mythic. It has eminence. As long as the Ur Dragon is in your command zone or on the battlefield, other dragon spells cost one less to cast. It has flying. Whenever one or more dragons you control attack, draw that many cards, then you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield and is a 10-10. Nine mana is a lot, like a ridiculous amount when it comes to playing a commander. However, with Eminence being one of the most broken keywords or broken words when it comes to Match of the Gathering, plus also a flying 10-10 with a broken ability too, this card is absolutely worth it, especially if you are a big dragon fan. This is one of those things that it's only not really worth it if second you play it, it gets countered or killed on sight. However, with the amount of dragons that are coming out and the amount of cards that make dragons cost less, this is still somewhat worth it. Now let's start off with the eminence part of it. If it's on the command zone or on the battlefield, all your dragons cost one less. Pretty much what you want in this deck is anything that says dragon. Now there is some creature cards that you're going to put in there that will help that because there's goblins and stuff that make dragons cost one less. However, the hard focus is pretty much dragons. Plus then whenever a dragon attacks, you get to put a permanent, doesn't have to be a dragon, onto the field for absolutely free and draw a shit ton of cards. You play a 10-10 or anything bigger, or lower, you get to draw that many cards and then put a permanent for free. This is really good, especially if you put something ridiculous like Omniscience or Omniscience onto the field, then you get to play all your dragons in your hand for free. Damage, get a full hand, do it again. This command is absolutely broken if played right. But if you're looking to build this deck and don't know what cards you want to put in to make dragons cost less, you can put cards in like Dragon Lord Servant, Dragon Speaker Shaman, Nogi Dragon Zealot, Sarkan Solar Flame, Amna Soul of Elements, Cloud Key, and Urza's Incubator. Before we go any further, you're probably wondering why I'm wearing a completely different but still awesome t-shirt. My camera died halfway through recording and I had to go out for the day. So again, this is the next day. So we're doing five from yesterday and five today. So we're gonna start off with this half, talking about the fifth Wilburg Commander, and that is Eski, God of the Tree. For one and two green, you get a legendary creature god. That's a mythic. She has vigilance, tap, add one mana of any color. Other legendary creatures you control have vigilance and tap, add one mana of any color, and it's a one four. The other side is the Primatic Bridge. For a white, blue, black, red, and a green, you get a legendary enchantment that is a mythic. 
At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card or planeswalker card. Put that card on the battlefield and put the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. This is a very rare thing. I cannot from the top of my head think of another commander that is a flip commander that can be a enchantment. I know there's one that's a sorcery. No, there's two that's a sorcery. One is white, black, red, and the other is green and blue. So again, but it's the only one I can think of that is a enchantment on the other side. When it comes to this, I will be talking about both sides and the benefits of playing it as your commander from both sides. Starting off for a three mana for a commander that's a mana rock, that's a one four, so it's somewhat of a decent blocker early game, is absolutely amazing. You literally have a mana rock creature able to play pretty much after turn three at any time that will help you escalate even further plus when it comes to this if you're playing a legendary's mana deck again having everything with vigilance is really really good but also the fact that after on your main phase two you're able to then tap all the creatures you attacked with dealing damage to be able to then play more creatures possibly even more powerful creatures if you didn't use your lands in main phase one. This side is absolutely amazing because you literally just get free mana from doing absolutely nothing unless you play non-legendary tribal. And then also the fact that there's a lot of cards that matter for how many legendaries and stuff you control. So again, you're just making the deck go faster and faster and faster each turn and hopefully out speed, out ramp and out damage every other player. Plus then later on, if someone's like, I'm sick of your commander, you're getting too much mana from it and they pop it, you go, oh no, I'm going to pay seven mana and then play the other side. So every time it's my turn, I get a free creature or planeswalker. What are you gonna do now? Still a really good ability because at that stage you should have a large amount of legendary creatures all really powerful, all benefiting other legendary creatures. Plus, if you put in, we'll say, flash and cards that let you untap all your lands and untap creatures, you pretty much get a turn on everyone's turn. Literally turn to your next opponent, they do something, you go, in reaction, I'm going to tap my lands that just untapped on my end step and play three legendary creatures. Now on the next person's turn, I'm gonna do the same thing and play another two. Oh, I have a bunch of cards that let me draw every time I play a creature. Oh, this is absolutely great. I am literally playing on everyone's turn. Now it's my turn. Everything now has like the, sim the summoning sickness gone. Now I have pretty much double the mana. Oh, I have a Seaborn Muse and a Windborn Muse on the field. This is even better. Now I'll, all my creatures on tap and all my lands on tap, all my creatures have vigilance, I get to attack and then you have to pay two every time you attack me. Again, this card is so great as a commander. Now let's go on to number four for you hooligans out there. Now, before I say this, I do make a lot of TikToks joking about sliver players. I don't have any problem with any way anyone plays magic except for pure land destruction for no reason. But at the same time, I still do admire it. When it comes to this, I do not hate these type of players. So I wanna make that clear, but I also do love having the bands with them. For my American audience, it's pretty much I joke at them and hopefully they joke back. So if you haven't guessed, this is a Sliver Commander and it is the first Sliver. For Wilberg, you get a legendary creature Sliver that is a mythic. It has Cascade. Slither spells you cast also have Cascade and it is a 7-7. Seven, seven. Five mana for a 7-7 seven, seven that gives you something for free is absolutely amazing. Again, Sliver decks are very easy and one of the most powerful decks to build. So pretty much any time you play a creature in the deck, you get a second permanent for free every time. However, you could be even more risky and play even more stupid, but more fun in my personal opinion. You can play this as a Cascade deck without any Slivers. There's multiple cards in Magic the Gathering that turn all your permanents and creatures into a certain creature type. You get cards just like Arcade Abduction, Conspiracy, Exnograft, Maxwood Nexus. Pretty much what you do is you then play one of these, tutor it any way you can, and then you literally just go, all my creatures are slivers. So now if you play anything, it has Cascade. Then you just play creatures that also have Cascade or that are big, massive things. You play this, Gold is now a sliver. It is a 12-12 with 12 mana. You then get something to Cascade in because technically it's a sliver. 
This card is absolutely amazing for that. You play your commander, your gold is seven mana cheaper as well. So again, why wouldn't you do this? The only difficult side with this is getting one of those cards. But again, with tutors, there's no problem. Then you also play cards that also have Cascade or help off Cascade, such like Apex Devastator, Aurora's Phoenix, Aven of the Chaos Bloom, Enigma Sphinx, and Maelstorm Wanderer. Now it's time to go on to the top three in my opinion. Now when it comes to this, I will do a little spoiler, so just in case people can guess what it is. Number three is going to be a card that isn't released yet. Mainly because I've seen this card and thought this card is absolutely broken. Now when the card is out, it may be completely different. However, I thought I would put this in just to get people excited and also to be cheeky and put it in my thumbnail and people going, what that? I want to know what that is. Let's watch this video and like it and share. I want to share it to my friends and my enemies. So when it comes to number three, we are going to be talking about Ezio Auditari de Frenzy. For one in the black, you get a legendary creature, human assassin that is a mythic. He has menace. Assassin spells you cast have free running for two black. When Ezio deals combat damage to a player, you may pay Wuburg. If that player has 10 or less life, when you do, that player loses the game and is a 3-2. So again, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong here. This is the cheapest mana for a Wuburg commander for only two mana. You also get a 3-2 with Menace for 2 mana. That card alone is quite good. Now when it comes to this, it doesn't come in with one really good ability. It comes in with two. So as I've recorded of this video, we haven't gone through the Assassins. And there hasn't been Assassins Creed uh, set released. So again, this number is going to jump up highly. But there is currently 91 Assassins when it comes to Magic the Gathering. Now being able to play all of them for two black mana is really, really good. Now I know Assassins are probably not gonna be the best. There's only gonna be a handful of cards. However, if any of them are three plus mana, paying two black mana with like cards that are able to get you a lot of black mana, like Black Market, Black Connections and Black Ritual is really, really good. Mainly because you literally just say, I'm just playing an assassin deck. I don't really mind what it does as long as it costs more than two black and I'm able to play it for cheaper. You're more likely to do something weird or at least broken. But then the second ability is quite difficult with the way it's phrased. However, it is a really good card. There's already been cards released about Assassin's Creed and there's also different Ezio cards. However, when it says Ezio deals combat damage, it has to be the commander. I was thinking if you had, because there is a second one, both of them on the field and you attack, you then pay Wilberg and they're both, like if the person's health is 10 or less, they're both out the game. No, it only counts for the one with the ability written on it. Then I thought, what about if you like play something that lets the legendary rule not apply and then you myriad it, then you have to, it does technically work, but I thought you just had to pay the Wilberg once it would see that all three Ezio's deal damage and then all three people, if they have 10 or less health, are out. No, you have to pay a Wooburg for each individual card. Again, not as good as I thought, but still an amazing card, especially if you had focus on it. Then I decided to see if there's any cards that you change people's health total to be able to easily help you beat this game. If you make him unblockable, you play this card beforehand, you attack, you win, but you get cards like Borathheim, Captive Audience, Magister Sphinx, Master of Cruelties, Repaying Kind, Shaman of the Forgotten Ways, Soren Markov, Sway of the Stars, Frasca Relic Seeker, and Wildfire. And because this guy's Wilburg, you're able to play all of them, which is again absolutely amazing, unless they're banned. I never checked if they were banned. Then the only thing you have to do is make your commander unblockable, power it up with other cards, and then absolutely destroy each opponent at the time, but you can get your commander to be unblockable by playing cards like Aqua's Form, Cloak of Mist, Deep Channel Mentor, Access Tunnel, Alpha Authority, Artful Dodge, Infiltrate, and Rogue's Passage. But then there's also a little special card that I just want to put in just because it feels a little bit nasty. And second I show this card, you're instantly going to know what it, the plan is. And that card is Ramson Assassin Lord. Now we're getting further and further and further down this time, getting more and more excited for what number one is. Probably half of you skipped just seeing number one and went, cool. But in number two, we're going to be talking about Sissy Weatherlight Captain. For two and a white, you get a legendary creature, human soldier that is a rare. 
Sissé Weather Light Captain gets plus one plus one for each colour among other legendary permanents you control. Wooburg, search a library for a legendary permanent card with converted mana costs less than Sissé's power, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle your library, and she is a 2 2. 3 mana for a 2 2 is meh, not really the best. But again, it's the abilities that make these commanders absolutely amazing. When she enters the battlefield, she gets plus one, plus one for each color among legendary permanents you control, which again, absolutely amazing, especially with two and three and four color cards. You also have a Wobo card before you play her, it, she instantly gets plus five, plus five. So then three mana for a seven, seven is really good. But then it's one of those things with her second ability, you play Wobo, you may want to play something even bigger, however, she's not more powerful. So there is cards to double her power and toughness or make her a bit stronger, then you're able to play the really, really big creatures. So you can get cards just like Almost Perfect, Belt of Giant Strength, Creeper Hulk, Giga Tomontus, Grass Unstoppable Judgment, Choose Your Weapon, so Padrel's Hunger Dominus, Exponential Growth, Unnatural Growth, Skull Spore Nexus, Hardened Scales, Foreign Place Moltres Rider, Court of Grandrig, Luminage Inspirant, Agent Brass Dragon. Now that she's doubled up, you just fill your deck with giant, giant creatures and then be able to just play them all for Wooburg is absolutely amazing. Plus, you're able to search for them and then be able to play it down instantly. It doesn't matter where it is in your deck, it is a really good tutor card and a very powerful commander. Now we're on to number one and my personally favorite deck when it comes to the decks I have. Again, it is very powerful and I've won in weird and ridiculous ways, but I didn't build the deck to be super, super powerful. I didn't try and plan to build a CEDH deck. I wanted to do something ridiculous and just that thing that's ridiculous works really well. So number one commander is, drum roll please, Joda the Unifier. For Wooburg, you got a legendary creature, human wizard that is a mythic. Legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. When you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile the top card of your library until you exile a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value. You may cast the card without paying its mana cost, put the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. So starting off, five mana for a five five, quite okay, perfect down the line. Then it comes in with not one broken ability, but two. The first one is, again, all your legendaries get powered up for each legendary. That card is absolutely broken. You literally just fill this with legendary creatures that are absolutely broken, they all power themselves up. But again, if that's not good enough, you can add cards like Ratter Durig the Urbog, Shanadin Sleeper's Scourge, Serkin's Dragon Claw, Avacyn's Memorial, and Hero's Pendulum. These power up all your legendary creatures, giving them keywords and stuff like that. So again, every time you play a card, you get a second card and they power up each other. And then you get to play another legendary permanent from your hand. And then it just keeps going way out of hand very fast. And then the rest of the deck is really, really easy to build. You literally just put every legendary creature that you have seen is broken in some form of way and you just throw it in. Because again, even if you're like, oh, that's a bit pricey, even though it's powerful, but it's a lot of mana. It's like seven, eight, nine, ten mana. You play it, it gets an additional plus one, plus one because Joda's on the field. Never mind what other legendary creatures are on the field. You then get to get another mana creature that's like seven, eight, nine, or ten plus, And then you're just like, cool. That actually is worth it because of the fact that it's getting like plus X plus X. Then you get all the other legendary permanents getting plus x plus x and you just got two creatures for the price of one even then it doesn't have to be creatures it's a legendary permanent the amount of times i'm like oh i want to play this but i don't want to get destroyed i play it oh cool i got avison's memorial well, what are you gonna do now unless you counter spell it but majority of the time they don't and i'm just like cool i now have a giant field full of giant creatures that are all powering each other cool uh, Heroes Pendulum, um, Cradle of Behemoth, cool, this is even better. And uh, my Planeswalker that I absolutely love in this deck is Venta. Venta, I'm gonna minus his abilities. All creatures are unblockable. So I'm going to attack with 10 creatures that get plus 10, plus 10 for each creature and plus 10, plus 10 for Heroes Pendulum. Never mind the Cradle of Behemoth numbers. Ignore that. I attack. This card is absolutely amazing and you get to do ridiculous stuff. 
absolutely love this card. So now with that, we've gone over 10 Wooburg commanders that are absolutely broken and amazing. I wish we could bring back Golos. Praise be to Golos. I will never stop arguing for that card to be unbanned. But again, it is such a good card, such good video. I would like to hear your thoughts and opinions. If there's any Wooburg cards that I missed that are great to be commanders, or if there's any of the cards I have mentioned that you think would should be built in a different way, let me know in the comments down below. While you're there, remember to like and subscribe and comment and share it to your friends, enemies, or other people that are in love with MTG. When it comes to these decks, you really want to put the money in and the effort in, so it's really good to put secret layer cards in, and there just happens to be a new secret layer coming out where I talk about it here. Really good video talking about the new secret layer cards and what's inside them. But if there's any other Magic the Gathering video you want to see, I have a playlist here and a subscribe button here that shows all my amazing Magic the Gathering videos. So if you're interested, please go and have a look and subscribe. But as always, I will see you all in the next video.